look tonight at Judges chapter number 11. And uh, for a little disclaimer, for all you great note takers, several years ago I preached a message from this. Um, title a name that is better than my circumstances. But I'm not looking at it the same way tonight. Amen. I'm looking at it in a different light tonight. As we look at Jacob, amen, in his life, there's some great lessons for us to learn. Amen. And, and, uh, and Judges 11 here. Starting at verse number one, the Bible says, Now Jacob, Jacob the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor, and he was the son of an harlot. Amen. Wow. And Gilead begat Jacob, Jacob, and Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up. And they thrust out Jacob and said unto him, Thou shalt not inherit our father's house. For thou art the son of a strange woman. Then Jacob fled from his brother and dwelt in the land of Tob. And there were gathered vain men to Jacob and went out with him. And it came to pass in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. And it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, Israel, the leaders of uh, the the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jacob out of the land of Tob. And they said unto Jacob, Come and be our captain, that we might fight with the, with the children of Amnon. And Jacob said unto the elders of Gilead, Did not ye hate me and expel me out of my father's house? And why are ye come unto me now when ye are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jacob, Therefore we turn again to thee now, that thou mightest go with us and fight against the children of Ammon, and be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. And Jacob said unto the elders of Gilead, If you bring me home again to fight against the children of Ammon, and the Lord deliver them before me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said unto Jacob, The Lord be a witness between us, if we do not so according to thy words. And Jacob went with the elders of Gilead, and with the people, and the people made him head and captain over them. And Jacob utterly uttered all the words before the Lord at Mitzvah. Let me just stop right here. Totally off of tonight's Bible study. Is it cool in here, anybody? Is everybody fired? Okay, well, let's go turn up one degree because it's kind of cool. All right. So. Those cool to me. I don't know. I don't want to freeze you out. I don't want you to be roasted, but I don't want to freeze you out either. <laughs> All right, back to Bible study. Sorry, you know, it's easy to get distracted sometimes, right? So, here we look, and probably most are familiar with this Jacob that we're looking at. Uh, the nation of Israel uh, uh, has repented uh, of, of their sin again, and they cried out to God uh, to deliver them from the Ammonites. Now, you may also remember this, but it makes me feel better if I tell you and not just assume that you know that the children of Ammon were those that, the, the Ammonites, Ammon was a son that was produced from the incest of Lot and his daughter. And they were always people that were known for their worship of strange gods and idols. And they, uh, they, they were contrary to God. You, anything that is, is, is conceived out of the will and the plan of God. Amen. Uh, and, and, and I want to be careful what I'm saying. Uh, but when, when it is conceived and said and allowed to continue and said, the sinfulness will just grow. And so we, we find that. However, God is able to deliver from sin and from a terrible uh, 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 place. And Jacob is an example of that. But, but here we find that, that uh, 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 they had this question, the children of Israel, 
those that were at Gilead, who's going to lead us when we fight against the Ammonites? We need someone who will lead us, will be our leader. And uh, so uh, as we, we find uh, coming into chapter number 11, we're introduced to this man, Jacob. And, and when we look at him, we, we find that the curtain is being drawn back on his life. And there's a lot that's said about him right at the very beginning of his introduction. And so we look at verse number 1 through 3, and we find that right up front, that we find that in the first verse, that, that he was a man of mountains and valleys. His life had mountains and valleys. I can relate to that. Can you? The mountains and valleys. And so uh, he was a mighty man of valor. That was a, a mountaintop experience for him. But we also find that there's a valley of his life that he is the son of a harlot. Now, in our generation, you know, things are so quickly changing, quickly changing. And there are some good things and, and change, but there are also some negative things and change. But one thing that, that probably in our generation, you know, you, you won't, you won't uh, the illegitimacy that, that, that is found in the Word of God, uh, you won't find the stigma that, that's quite, that, that, that is quite there like we find that is being found right here for Jacob. And so uh, a mighty man of valor. And, and uh, so courage uh, would be what would mold him to accomplish great things for God. And so we find that uh, 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 he doesn't allow his past to be a crutch or turn him into a victim. We also find that in our society, everybody's a victim. It's about time they find a savior out of their being a victim. And only Jesus can do that. And I admire this man who in a very ungodly atmosphere, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but he still trusted God. God is the deliverer. <laughs> Thank God that he's the deliverer. And so we find that, 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 that everything that is in his past, that most or some would allow them to drive them to, to a painful past, that would allow them to become bitter. Amen. We find that it becomes the catalyst of what draws them closer to God Almighty. Amen. So when the devil lies to you and tells you that God doesn't care, and he's really good at doing that, amen, making you question, does God care about me? Amen. But we find that here is Jacob, and he is the one who shows us that, that, that when the devil makes us want to doubt and makes us want to question, amen, that God wants to give us the victory and use us in a victorious way in our life. And so he, here he is, a young man, amen, who's paying the price for, for his parents' failures. That's what he's doing. Scars that he grows up with from his parents because he is the product of a heart. Illegitimacy. Some regard. And so as the years pass, we find that tension increases with he and step -man. You know that fairy tale that we're all familiar with, Cinderella? And how Cinderella is treated like the stepdaughter. Well, we find that long before Cinderella was ever developed, the truth was from the Word of God. The stepchild is treated like that. And so here it is that uh, his father marries. And uh, his stepmother, she has sons of her own, and they begin to grow up, and all of a sudden, stepmama said, this boy is going away, because he is not going to inherit what my sons are going to inherit. So she needs to go. Does that sound familiar with anything else in the Bible? Anywhere else in the Bible that we've previously read that we find something similar to? You hit the nail on the head, Spadina. It reminds me a lot of back in Genesis 21. In verse number 11, no, verse number 10, the Bible says, speaking of Sarah, when she said to Abraham, cast out this bondwoman in her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And so here it is, it's happening again. Amen. Throw out! He's not going to inherit the blessing.
blessings, he's not going to be an heir of what my son is going to get. So we find that it's repeating itself. And so Je Jephthah, he's despised, he's rejected, he's really, a, he, he's really, a, we look at him and we can say like Jesus, he's acquainted with sorrow and grief. He really, really is. And uh, he was all alone uh, except for having one person with him. And that was God. Feeling alone. And, uh, but he found that when he was alone and all he had was God, was it God was enough? Now I know this sounds elementary tonight, but sometimes it's these elementary things that we forget. That when all we have is God, we'll find that God is all we need. But my God shall supply your need according to his fruits of the Lord. But all we have is God. Listen, folks. Sometimes life can be rough. But coming to the place of realization that if all I have is God, then God will be enough. And Jephthah is that, that example of that. And so his life is a pattern that's repeated over and over in Scripture. Little did his brother know that he would become a judge of Israel. But we, we find that, that, that his life is a pattern because we also find that there's some other people in Scripture that are much like him that, that are forgotten about. Do you remember Joseph? His brother didn't like him as well. Particularly when he had a dream and, and uh, he, he, he revealed his dream and they didn't like the dream. And, and so uh, uh, Joseph walks alive. Uh, 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 he's, he's driven away from his family. But one day he's promoted, amen, to be the Savior. He's going to save them. He's going to be the one that, that provides provision for them. And how about uh, King David? It's very interesting that when we look at David, and so it looks like his whole life, most folks who I, I read that, uh, uh, that they did a a study of the home life of David, and David's home life wasn't the best. How do you come to that conclusion where you see that he was a son of his father at his old age and he was sent out to take care of the sheep? And remember when Samuel comes by and he's looking to anoint the next king, it isn't even thought about bringing David in from the field. He wasn't even in the thoughts of his father. Amen. And what he wasn't, all the other brethren was there, but he was forgotten about. And so David, he was tending to the sheep. And so it looks like he has a slowly uh, life, even a childhood, where maybe there's a unhappiness intertwined in it. Amen. But he learns that he has God when nobody else is around. Amen. And eventually we find that David he says in Psalms, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Amen. It's clear to see that he realized that God was there when no one else was. Amen. How awesome <coughs> that God is there when we feel like were being rejected. And uh, 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 here it is that it's seven years before he really even gains the full support of, uh, 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 of the tribes of Israel. And so uh, Jephthah, Joseph, David, all gives us a resounding message that no matter what our family background is, no matter how lonely we may feel, no matter how rejected we may feel, it doesn't matter. God is able to use us for His glory. Amen. How wonderful. Amen. Amen. As Christians, we know that God is the great determiner. We may feel rejected from things. We may feel like we've been slighted. We may feel like we've been forgotten about. But God is the determiner. Amen. And He is the master architect of our life. The Bible tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Amen. So we know that God, His forgiveness and His grace, amen. None of us are a prisoner to our past, no matter what our past has been, because God is the elevator and God is the promoter. We can move forward in the Lord, amen, because we can do all things through Christ, which strengthens us. Amen. So God uses Jephthah's life to show that he can use unusable things and he can bring beauty out of our past and our brokenness. Thank God for that. Amen. 
Jephthah illustrates that God uses the lowly, the weak, and the foolish. The Word of God says, let me just turn there, 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. Verse number 28, the Bible says, And the base things of the world and the things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are. That no flesh should glory in His presence. But of Him are ye in Christ Jesus, who God has made unto, uh, uh, unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Jephthah was an example that God can take those things which are not and make them as they are. Amen. And there's no glory in our flesh, but it's all the glory that goes to His name because He gives promotion from the commotion. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And so here it is. I, I, I need to show you that and tell you that God uses men who, who trust in Him. Amen. But, 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 but men can also trust God. Jephthah was not someone who we can say is marked by great spiritual maturity. We don't see that in his life. But we find that even though his knowledge of the Lord was not deep, it was real. Don't underestimate when folks put a real confidence and trust in God. We may not understand. We may not have it all figured out. Amen. But when we know that we can trust God, and God knows that He can trust us, Amen. He will do remarkable things in us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you look through Jephthah's life, you'll find that he uses the name of the Lord so very often. He learns to run into the name of the Lord. And so his sufferings, his unfair rejection, amen, he didn't blame others, he didn't get discouraged, he didn't become hard or heartless, amen, he learned to have joy in the trials. I'm just kind of there with us as a church. God, what is it that you're teaching me in the difficulty? What is it that you're teaching me in the trial? Not that I get angry, not that I get bitter, not that I get frustrated, but that I find joy in the journey, even in the trial. And I find the lesson that you're trying to teach me. And so rejection certainly is no fun at all. Amen. It's painful. It's tearful. Uh, it's sorrowful. It's hateful. It's frightening. Rejection, however, can be constructive to our character. Amen. It can be productive in our principles. Amen. It can be insightful in our insights in life if we will respond the right way. So when we find that we're being rejected and not accepted, how are we going to do it? God, take me deeper and show me. Let me my character grow. Give me insights that I would have never gained had I not gone through this. Amen. Let it be a time of molding in my life. Amen. And so we find that it's a time of very crucial molding in the life of Jephthah. God uses His gifts and His talents. Amen. He learns great things. He learns strategy. He turns to the arts. Uh, he learns of military. Here he is in the land of, 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 of Toe. And, and, and the Bible says that he's with some vain men. What does it mean? These men that are unemployed. These men that are bankrupt. These men that are empty. Amen. Men are just looking for something. Amen. And so here it is, misfits and rejected in society, just like Jacob. And what does what does Jacob do? Amen. We see that they kind of gravitate together. Amen. They're all kind of feeling the same sense. Do you know people gravitate together? Amen. Unspiritual people gravitate, gra gravitate to unspiritual people. Real spiritual people love to gravitate to spiritual people. Amen. It's the gravitational pull. And so here they are gravitating to one another. Amen. And so uh, we find that as they're gravitating to one another, that Jephthah learns leadership skills. 
I'll lead this ungodly band. Amen. We'll become an effective force. And so it's almost like, any of you familiar with Robin Hood? It's almost like he's the Robin Hood of the Old Testament. That's almost what he seems like to me. And uh, so he, he develops this unofficial police force. And uh, uh, this, these soldiers that attack the enemy. No, David really did the same thing when he was hiding from King Saul, didn't he? He develops this band of mighty warriors with those that are misfits. And so Jephthah's name itself means he opens or God opens. You see, God has a way of opening things, even when we're trials. He has a way of opening it up that we understand. It has a way of opening it up that we grow. Amen. God makes the way clear. And so in verse number four, we find that the Amorites, they're making war against Israel. Israel has a problem, but Israel has no solution. And a bad fix. And so in verse number 5 and 6, we find that they bring out this request to Jacob. His brothers did not want him, but the elders of Gilead did want him. And so they needed him. And so they send this delegation committee 80 miles away to talk to Jacob. Amen. And, 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 and what a change of events. He was once asked to leave, but now he's invited to leave. Wow. Wow. How amazing. How amazing. You may feel like God or your situation has asked you to leave. Amen. But God may be doing a work in the middle of you that one day He's going to ask you to leave. Amen. We don't like trials. We don't like separation. We don't like rejection and difficulty. Amen. But God may be making a leader out of you. Amen. He was asked to exit by his family. Amen. But now he's asked to excel by his countrymen. Amen. Those may reject you, but God may turn around and have a multitude that may want to have you excel. Thank God that in the middle of all God is the one who gives promotion. Hallelujah. And so the echoes, amen, of retreat has changed, amen, and, and, and Jacob, amen, he didn't apply for it, he didn't work for it, he didn't negotiate for the position, but God in his own time provided. Mm. Would you let that sink in? Jacob didn't do anything. All he did was take his circumstances and have joy and felt a confidence and a love and a trust in God. And he just used it. And because of that, God in his own time opened the doors for Jacob to serve. Amen. He promoted him to the chief position of Gilead. Amen. There's a great tr truth here. The call of God can come at any time. Jacob wasn't looking for this. Jacob didn't expect this. Jacob was right where he was placed and he wasn't bitter, he wasn't angry, he wasn't upset, but he was simply being the best of God says, it's your season. It's your time. So it's important to be prepared and to be ready and to be willing that when God says now is a season, you can last to be patient. Amen. Let me ask you this question tonight. Are you ready to arise if the opportunity would open? Whatever that is, for doing something greater for God in this kingdom, are you ready to arise if the opportunity would open? You see, my responsibility as a Christian in life 
is to be involved where I am. Sister Rachel, you said something wonderful and testimony about Rebecca tonight, by the way. And you said something that just, uh, just uh, permeated me and helped me um, because of your transparency just about character. Thank you. Because it's real. It's real. However, I also heard that that prayer, God, help me to be involved right here one night. I prayed that even this week as a parent. Let me be involved right here. I don't know what the bigger platform down the road will be. My responsibility. Whatever God has placed me to. Amen. God has placed me where I'm at to be involved. And I've got to do what I've got to do. And I'm preaching to myself right now. I've got to be involved in doing what God has placed me to do. And then if God will, because I've been faithful, the next platform will. Amen. And that's on several levels. <clears throat> Amen. I'm here to do the will of God where God has placed me to. God opens the doors of opportunity. Amen. In the person who has an available heart. Amen. But that person is always finding plenty to do right where they are. For each of us. Amen. We just have to live faithfully in the present. Amen. And God will concern himself with our future. I want to say that one more time. We have to live faithfully in the present. And God will concern himself with our future. Sometimes we are so uh, oriented to try to get to where we want to be. And there's nothing wrong with having goals. But the goals has to be with God in it. And so for me, I've got to be satisfied right here. Amen. And allow God to handle the future while I'm faithful with the present that he gave me. And so in verse number 7, it's almost a review of the past. He said, aren't you the ones who hated me and kicked me out of my father's house? And eventually his stepbrothers are part of this delegation. When life was going good, they didn't need you. But life wasn't going so good when it was going bad. Amen. They wanted him. But I need to tell you this. Did you hear what I just said? When life was going good, they didn't need you. But when life was going bad, they wanted you. But I think when we look a little closer at Scripture, Brother Doug, this isn't just about family dynamics. This is about a relationship with God and our parents. Because they didn't need God and they didn't need But now they need God to be living. Oftentimes, the way folks will treat us and our relationship with men is reflective of our relationship with God. When we're not happy with God, when we're not praying, when we're not contented, when we're not in the will of God, it will show in the way that we respond to other people. And that is ours to own. And it's reflected in the life of Jacob's brothers. They weren't in a good place spiritually, so they treated their brother inappropriately and mean. Amen. So when we find ourselves not treating folks the way that they should be treated, it is a reflection of the spiritual condition of our heart and our relationship with God and vice versa. Be mindful when folks aren't treating you so well. It is a reflection of their heart with God Almighty. And so Jacob asked, <clears throat> I'm to be the head? In Hebrew, the word is chief. It's the same word that is used in Genesis 1-1 in the beginning or at the head. You see, God always is the revealer of what's ahead. Amen. Jacob, God is the author of what is going on. You see, 
We don't always understand the rehearsal rooms that we're in. Jacob didn't realize that this was a rehearsal for what God had already orchestrated for the future. How about it? Joseph, amen, he was brought to the, the prison to the palace in one day. But God was using the rehearsal in Potiphar's house and in the prison to get him ready for the palace. We find that for Daniel, he went from the lion's den one day, the rehearsal room, to having power and authority the next day. Amen. You know why? Because God had him in the rehearsal room. Three Hebrew children, they were in the rehearsal, in the fire. But God was about to deliver them in moments. Amen. And was going to change their life because they were faithful in the rehearsal. You see in Mordecai's uh, life, we find that Haman had built for him a place to be executed in the gallows. Amen. But it was during those times in the rehearsal that God was doing something in Mordecai's life. See, we sometimes don't realize that God is not making mistakes, but God has us in a role where we're rehearsing for a bigger picture of what God has for us. And so Jacob, amen, saw that it was an occasion for serving the Lord and being faithful. Any of you ever read in Hebrews chapter number 11 in the Hall of Faith, and you come down to verse number 32, and the Bible says, And what shall I say more? For time with family I can tell of Gideon, of Barak, and Samson, and of Jesus. You mean when God forgot about me, when my family forgot about me, or it seemed God forgot about me? God was still orchestrating a rehearsal for me. And my faith broke through. And I am written in the hall of faith because I was faithful in the commotion before God brought the promotion. You see, there can be scoffers. There can be those who will doubt. Amen. But God is always faithful if we will put our confidence and trust in Him. If we Trust Him. Amen. God will see that He can trust us. Amen. Someone, you have something you'd like to share? I find this to be a powerful story. Amen. A powerful history. Not a fable. This is evidence of the Lord of God to those who are faithful to Him in the final life of our circumstances.